good morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends in North America and hello to anyone watching on replay. My name is Nancy Hetker and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Melbourne, Australia. And today I am going to be showing you a few ways to use this new product that's in our annual catalog. Uh, they call it the Soft Pastels Assortment. Um, and when I saw that these were in the catalog, at first I thought they were like the oil pastels that we used to use in art class in school. I'll show them to you here. Um, I love that they come in a box with all this nice foam to keep them it keeps them from breaking and it keeps it just keeps them nice i'm i'm one for organization um and as i took them out to play with them i realized they're actually chalk pastels um and i started stamping back towards the end of when stampin up was doing chalk pastels before and they were in a plastic palette box and they were like one inch squares of color and it had every single color in our family just about although they were changing things up and colors were going out and anyway um so i was at the end of that and i did have a set of those uh, but they're long gone and this is what we're using now um and it's fun to bring back some of the old techniques that we were using and also see some some new things um today i'm just going to play with a couple of techniques and i'll come back another day and do some others um Hey, Kayla, thanks for joining me, and Gladys. It's nice to see you guys. If you're here, please say hello. I love to see who's watching me. Kayla, now I'm intimidated because you're such a good artist. Um, but I've been uh, playing a little bit the last day or so, so hopefully I won't embarrass myself too much here, show you guys some things that maybe you didn't know. Um, or help reinforce things that you did. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my, um, this is a silicone mat. You can use scrap paper. You can use a big acrylic block. Um, I think this is easy. It's a nice size. It's easy to wash off. Um, and the first thing I'm going to show you is a technique that we did. It's probably one of the first things I did as a customer when I was first getting to know Stampin' Up! and stamping. Um, and it's called Poppin' Pastels. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get some of this um, so that it's usable for this technique. Um, you can, uh, really the best thing for this technique is, is often a, um, a Q-tip. And you can go like that, but you don't get very much. And for the Poppin' Pastels, you really want to have powder. So um, I'm going to take some of these and... Um, the spatula end of your take your pick tool um, and you just scrape off and get a little pile of powder for your on your palette there whichever type of palette you're using so let me tell you a little bit about the colors here so this is supposed to be night of navy not sure it's quite as intense as as our full-on night of navy but let me get a little bit of that on there. I'm not sure quite what all I'm gonna be using on what project. So we'll, we'll get some of each of these on here. And Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana. If you don't have the take your pick tool, A, you need to get one because it's so useful in so many ways, but you can also do this with an X-Acto or a craft knife. Um, this is Mossy Meadow. Gorgeous grape. Ooh. That was a bad noise, wasn't it? Poppy Parade. Well, 
Thank you, Kayla. No, I wasn't fishing for compliments. Huh? That's um, Mango Melody. Although, I don't know. I don't think it's quite as orange as the mango. I don't, I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit more like crushed curry. But anyway, and then this is um, Daffodil Delight. So, there's some chalk to work with. I'm going to stick those out of the way. Um, I like to have just a microfiber cloth and a paper towel around to wipe, wipe things with. Um, and then Poppin' Pastels. I'm going to use um, this Blossoms in Bloom. I haven't used this in a while. But it's it's going to be nice for getting that color on there. And what we're going to do, I like, oh, so much for having it preset. <laughs> what I was trying to say is... Um, like to have something under here for when I ink, just to support that arm. And I put it on the Stamparatus um, mostly because it's a large stamp. And as I said before, the large acrylic blocks I find are just kind of unwieldy and I spend time lining up and then I like drop it or something. So I just find the Stamparatus much easier when dealing with large stamps. So, this is the Versamark ink. It is um, clear, but very sticky. You may remember that we use that for embossing powder all the time. But today, we're gonna use it with the pastels. And I know you cannot see I'm really sure you can't see that on there. Um, but we're now going to add some color to it. Um, you can use Q-tips or cotton swabs or earbuds or whatever you call them. Um, and I think I'm going to make purple flowers. And you just rub or dab that color on and it sticks to the verse mark. Sticks really well on the verse mark. Now you can also use like this is a I don't know I think it's probably some kind of makeup brush that I don't know, Nicole probably decided she didn't want or need. Anyway, it's a clean brush. It's a nice soft brush. That goes on very nicely there. I think I'll keep using this. So it does go on to the parts that don't have Versamark as well, but not as intently, intensely. And you'll see how I get some of that off a little bit. But you see how that color just pops out. And I know some people ask if you need to use a fixative because it's chalky and powdery. Um, and I think once we're all done, it's going to be okay. And we're not going to need to do that. From what I have seen online and my own experience playing around. Okay, so... 
You do want to do this before that Versamark dries because then it won't be sticky and grab onto the powder. I think we can go in and add a little more intense color some places. I may need to get some more. Okay, so some of those are a little darker and some of those are a little lighter, but that's okay. That's how it happens in nature too. Um, I'm gonna bring in my, scrub that off here on my, when I'm all done, I'll give things <clears throat> like this a good rinse and that'll come right off. I'm gonna bring in my paper towel and I'm gonna brush off some of this excess. And I'm also going to bring in my pencil eraser. There we go. Um, because believe it or not, that will take some of the chalk off too. Just get a little less. Now it's nice and soft, so that can be a real plus. I mean, it's sort of a dreamy. Is that the word I'm looking for? Dreamy look to it but I do want to clean up just a little bit here cleaning out the centers a little bit in between the flowers a little bit there we go I'm just gonna keep cleaning 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 as you go here so I am going to bring in I've got <laughs> several different class preps going so I, I'm <laughs> actually kind of short on blocks at the moment. So I'm going to bring in few leaves. That's one of the reasons I wanted to clean up is I wanted to be able to add a few of these leaves. And I could have stamped all at once, but then I'd get purple on my leaves and green on my flowers. And yeah. So I'm going to use a Q-tip again and I'm going to start with some granny apple green. Just to find my flowers here. Apparently, I like the brush more. I know it's here somewhere. And I'm going to add in a little bit of mossy meadow. Do kind of a two-tone. one would have been better I think if I'd stamped on my mat my piercing mat oh that's good So there's that one. Has anybody else purchased these and played with them at all? OK, 
Kayla, I would think you might have, although you've been pretty busy in your life. a couple of two-tone leaves there we go and now I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of a flower center doing that would be good okay This is another, this is a bitty bitty blending brush. Remember I told you I am, um, before Stampin' Up! carried their own blending brushes. I bought some off of eBay that were um, actually sold as makeup brushes. And I had this little one and this is perfect for this. Okay, so that's Daffodil Delight. I'm going to see. I may have put so much on that I can't really get any of the mango melody to take, but let's see. Yeah. So I'm going to brush off again some excess powder. You can see I get excess there. And again, I'm going to clean up just a little bit because... it looks a little bit smudgy to me now it's not coming off of where I've got the Versa mark which is nice I'm trying not to get on there very much but as in not erase on there very much but it's really not coming off of those parts I don't mind a little bit of it kind of shadowing my images but that's better Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So, that is the Pop and Pastels technique, and I really, I mean, I, it really doesn't come off. I don't think you need to f do a fixative with hairspray or an artist fixative or anything like that. So, oh, there, hi, Wurgy. Okay, so now I have to figure out how to mount this up. This is Gorgeous Grape, a piece of Highland Heather here. I think I'm gonna keep these pretty simple. I'm just hemming and hawing here as usual. I will bring in my piercing mat. There we 
go. going to keep it really 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 simple sometimes that's okay Looking at what I've got for embellishments here. so bad with embellishments I think kind of know where and how many I don't need to be an odd number Okay, so there's one. Poppin' pastels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, probably the same white, working the same white um, eraser material. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. Oh, let me show you couple other so there's the one I just did here's a couple other pop and pastels when I was playing the other day there's one that's from the um, art gallery that's well both of these actually are from art gallery there's another one that I did and these cards are a little more put together because I had time to sit and think about them more and I didn't plan out my this one so there are three different versions of the pop and pastels. Um, I am going to grab another stamp set real fast. as free as a bird. And grab another piece of cardstock. And I'm going to stamp this in memento. paranoid about dirty stamps falling on something. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a blender pen. Actually, I'm going to put more 
I used up a couple colors here, so I'm going to put some more on here. Um, and it's interesting, this one's much softer than the gorgeous grape. Okay, and this time I'm going to use a blender pen and we're just going to pick up the color. I'm going to do some Calypso Coral. I'm going to make some bluebirds of happiness, right? interesting as the color runs out you get you know it starts out quite vibrant and then as it wears out runs out on the pen it gets a bit lighter Um, the thing about the blender pens on the Whisper White is you want to use light strokes and you don't want to scrub at the paper too much because it'll start to pill. And I am not a good watercolor artist. It always frustrates me. <laughs> but I keep trying. That's what counts, right? And then just like you would with any other ink, you just scrub it on your scratch paper to clean out the color. Let's come in with some of this Night of Navy that isn't very navy. Somewhere, it's, it's a little bit more like um, Misty Moonlight. And or um, it looks like Pacific Point on the stick and on the powder here. It gets a little, little darker than that, I think. But it all, they all kind of blend together nicely. Yes, lots of control. I, because they're not super wet. I think it's particularly nice. And like I said, the color blends together nicely when you layer it up like this. I don't know how much you can really see. Just keep going back and adding stuff as you see fit. The blender pen has such a fine point that it's really nice for getting into little bitty spots. Didn't really want to do those strokes, but there we go. We'll blend them out. So we are happily, 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 technically out of lockdown today. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, for my purposes, it doesn't matter. I mean, 
it does. I can go all kinds of places I couldn't before, which is nice. But for my classes, I still can't have people in the house. So the people who have enrolled in my class that we've now postponed, I can't even keep track anymore. A week, two weeks. Anyway, we're doing it on Zoom on Saturday. No, no way around that, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna come in and add some yellow to the bellies. Any questions? About what I'm doing, why I'm doing it? About anything you may have seen on my blog or Instagram in the recent times? I'm gonna make these flowers with red. You can see a little bit of this powder goes a long, long way. So these, here in Australia, these um, pastels, it's $9 for the set, and they're gonna last forever, and ever and ever. Okay, time to do Foliage. Oh, I see I got two more. Two more flowers to do. I'll get back to those. I'm making the branch mossy meadow since we don't have a brown. Oh, three more flowers. some granny apple green leaves, I think. Have I mixed them? Um, I haven't mixed them like on the palette. Um, like on here, they I've blended the two blues, the Coastal Cabana and the Night of Navy together to, let me pick it up and see if you can see what I've done. So they kind of blend together a bit. Oh, that may be too close. <laughs> a little too close. Um, 
but I haven't tried like color mixing to make another color. But obviously one could try that. Good. I yeah, please come back um on my Facebook page and and post somewhere where we can find it in the comments or something. That'd be great. Thank you, Wergy. And I'm so sorry to hear <laughs> New South Wales near where we were a year ago. Four more weeks of lockdown. It's tough. It is very tough, I know. So, I think... Yeah, that's some... Paper pilling, there we go. I'm going to put a sentiment on there. Which one? We're the best of friends. There we go. And I think I'm going to do a die cut on here. I just have to figure out which one. So bear with me. This week is kind of semi-planned. I'm going over to my cut and emboss machine for a moment. Talk amongst yourselves. There's that part. I'm going to make a layer or two here. So I'll be right back. I'm coming, I'm coming.
What do you think? You like that? Yeah, I was thinking about putting another layer under there. Maybe adding some texture, but maybe that detracts from all of this. Here, come here. Hi, Renata. Thanks for joining me today. You like the double layer, just as is or with texture? Kind of like that. I was going to do black baker's twine with a bow over here, but I think I like this better. And I'm, I need the black baker's twine for a class project. And I don't want to run out. <laughs> so. I'm holding off on using it. Okay, let's see if I can get this really thin strip of cardstock adhered. So, how is life in your neck of the woods, Renata? You can see I'm using really, really tiny dots of glue. Stay still. I love to use my grid paper to assist me in getting it straight hopefully i think that's straight i think it helps to have it a little bit long because it gives you a little bit of a handle Try that on some dimensionals. See if I can keep going straight. I know I showed you guys my desktop vacuum 
which is wonderful when I have all this powdery and eraser stuff all over. living dangerously here. there. And I'm going to mat um, black and white on the inside too, off camera. Okay, so there's that one colored with the pastels, soft pastels, and the blender pen. And this one made with poppin pastels, and these two that I made previously with poppin pastels. And I've got more techniques, but I will save those for another week. I'm not saying it'll be next week, because something else might take my fancy in the meantime. But um, hopefully that'll get you started. Um, like I said, these are really affordable and really versatile for coloring. Obviously you can color directly to paper with them. We'll try that sometime. Um, yeah, if you're in Australia and you would like for me to be your demonstrator, you can send me a private message, leave a comment on this video, either on YouTube or on Facebook, and I will be happy to get you the catalogs that start next week, the, um, the new mini catalog and the celebration, because celebration starts the 3rd of August again with some really great stuff i may have to show you some of that next week um and what if you go to my youtube channel you should be able to find the last the two mystery stampings that i've done if you would like to play along with those feel free um otherwise have a great week i will be back same time same place next week and take care thanks for joining me Bye bye